Today, we're converting a master bedroom to the industrial style, phase two, industrial canopy bed with directional spotlighting. Let's rock. Most four poster beds don't look very masculine. So I wanted to challenge myself to design one that struck a balance between masculine and refined and improvised with unconventional hardware intended for a different use. Canopy beds have become purely aesthetic and without utility. So I wanted to create a functional rationale for the structure and add a cool innovative feature to it. And what I came up with was built from four by fours of cheap dug fur connected by exterior pergola corner brackets and decking post bases with twin saddles and pipe accents would be added to simulate concert stage lighting with directional spotlights that could be used to light artwork on the wall. Wiring would run through the pipe to a dimmer in the post accessed while in bed as a reading light control. To start, I used painter's tape to create a quick mock-up and gather measurements, and then transpose those measurements to a visual mock-up I created with Illustrator. Once I was happy with it, I created plans for the top and front view at 100% scale, accounting for actual lumber sizes, pipe accents, and ceiling fan location. But before working on anything else, the fan needed to be moved and centered over the location of the new bed before it became inaccessible from the canopy height. I decided to take further inspiration from industrial interior design and paint the ceiling, vents, and covers black while I still had access. I also found retrofits for the recessed lights with black trim. And now I was finally ready to select my lumber according to plans. I used dried dug fur for its strength and cost efficiency and stayed away from anything green as it could crack and split after drying later. Once it was home, I began measuring and cutting the posts and rails so that I could create a mock-up in my garage. I used the 4x4 scraps to get a feel for how the post base hardware attaches. The included timber screws don't require pilot holes which made it really easy to assemble. There's a base plate and then four others that fit around each side and two have cutouts for saddles which I then slid the 2x4 rails into to form the bed's perimeter. brought everything inside and reassembled it to evaluate the bed scale inside the room and check if everything was level while on the flooring. After measuring the finished height of the 2x4 rail, I realized that placing a 1x6 on the floor used as a skirt to hide the gap would also create a ledge all the way around that could be used to place 2x12 slats and they would end up perfectly flush with the top edge. This was a huge time saver. I used the inside measurements from post to post and cut the skirts. The next step was to mark the skirt's corners to fit around the edges of the post base hardware by measuring and transposing it onto cardstock which I then used as a template to mark all other skirts. I labeled the back of each skirt for future reference. I didn't necessarily have to shave a sliver off the end, but I tend to be a perfectionist and wanted the bed to be according to plans. I then used a jigsaw to cut out the remainder of the notches and brought each inside to check the fit. They were still a little to shave off before it fit correctly, so I marked those areas and retrimmed them with the jigsaw. On the back side of each skirt, I marked a line corresponding to the height from the floor to the saddle's bottom screw hole and used it to measure off about eight locations to drill 1 16th inch pilot holes. 
With the rails off, the skirts could then be placed on the floor and fit against the hardware so that the faces could be marked around the saddles. Then I set the depth of my rotary tool's routing blade to be the same as the metal thickness of the saddle. I butted up a 1x6 scrap so that the tool had an edge to rest on and maintained the same depth after cutting out the shape. After routing, I sanded it quickly and checked his fit inside, which was perfect. And one bit of advice that totally should have been common sense when I lost my blade was, don't try to save another trip to the hardware store by using a sanding bit. You'll just make a lot of smoke. Back inside, I started on the support by using a clamp to hold the skirts on and then measured the length of the inside opening where the connection was the tightest at the corner. I did the same thing and measured the length of the slats. And after everything was cut, I brought them in and tested the idea of using the 1x6 skirt as a ledge to carry the 2x12 slats and it seemed promising even without the hardware holding it together. Now, even though I wanted to exaggerate the feeling of verticality through very tall posts and a really low bed, I just felt like the posts were too tall for the room, so I trimmed them down. Once those were cut, I placed the corner brackets at the top edges and marked each hole for the bolts, then used a mini drill press attachment for a cordless drill to drill each hole. But I found that there was way too much movement to create a straight hole, so I screwed all four corners down to a scrap piece of 2x4 to provide more stability and clamping. Everything worked out great, so I moved on to filling surface imperfections with wood filler and larger areas with Bondo. Back inside the house, I measured the height from floor to light switch cover and used that to determine the location for where I wanted my dimmer switch on the bed post. Then traced the outside silhouette of an upside down electrical box, then marked off the area for the flange that would need routing and taped off my drill bit for the depth of the box plus a little extra for wiring to fit behind. Using that drill bit with the depth marked off, I began making a series of holes and then cleaned it out with a chisel and rotary tool. I continued until the box fit nicely inside, but also had to make notches at opposite corners to clear the screws on the box. I routed the area for flanges after setting the depth of the bit to the metal thickness of the box, and then drilled a hole for wiring. Now that all the cutting, drilling, routing, and wood filler was done, I used the random orbital sander to prepare the surface for paint starting with an 80 grit, then 180, and then 220 grit sandpaper. After cleaning all the surfaces with a shop back and a brush attachment, I laid out some cheap plastic drop cloth and set out all the pieces with their exterior surfaces facing up. Painted them with one coat of satin black using paint rollers made for smooth surfaces like cabinets and doors, and then a second coat after the first one dried. The corner brackets were set out and sprayed satin black as well and then it was just a matter of waiting for paint to dry. I brought all the parts in and I couldn't wait to start assembling everything to catch a glimpse of what this might become. I screwed together all the posts and bases using included timber screws that fit inside decorative hex cap nuts but didn't fully cinch them down because I wanted to connect all parts and do that afterward. Once 
the parts were mocked up, I attached a cheap post level and pushed each post until it was level. I set another piece of scrap lumber leaning against it to hold this position while I attached the remaining screws to the rails and saddles. Before attaching the skirts, I decided to drill through their pilot holes and into the rails behind them at the depth of the screws that I selected in order to prevent possible splitting. Then I cinched down all the base hardware and added the hex cap nut covers using an Allen wrench. The foundation of the structure was built and I moved on to the beams, measuring the finished size between each post and using that to cut each pair. Then I repeated the earlier process of using the corner brackets to mark out the bolt locations for drilling. After mocking up the posts and brackets by sliding a few bolts through, I used just one bolt at the bottom so that I could rest the beam on top, making it easier to lift and position the opposite end while sliding a bolt through. Then went back and slid the first single bolt through as well as the remaining ones. Some holes were too tight to fit bolts through so I marked them with painter's tape, labeled each beam location, and then took down the beams and drilled them out a little bit until the bolts fit perfectly. I inserted all the bolts into holes poked into pieces of cardboard and saved money by painting bolts black as opposed to buying black bolts. And then I sprayed both sides as they both would be visible on top of the corner brackets. Once those dried along with the beams that I had just painted, I assembled everything hand tight and with the bolt heads facing out and used the black washer under the cap and the nut. I reused the measurement of the beams and cut 2x4s for trim. Somehow I'd forgotten to route a line from the back side of the post where the electrical box would be down to the base so that the power cord could be hidden as it makes its way to the floor. So I did that. The corners of the front and rear slats had to fit against the unique inside corners where the hardware meets with the posts and rails. So I used a cheap contour gauge to copy and transfer each by tracing the edge with a pencil and then cutting it out with a jigsaw. Now I could create legs by using the measurement between the bottom of the slat to a halfway adjusted furniture leveler and subtract that from the width of a 2x4. I cut the legs out of a generic pine table leg from the hardware store and then drilled pocket full of screws on opposite ends and cut off the excess. I marked the center of both stubby legs and drilled a 1 16th inch pilot hole before drilling down to the depth of the threaded portion of the leveler and hammering the claw nut in so that it could attach to the threaded foot. Back inside, I measured the length of the inside opening from corner to corner, cut a 2x4 to that size, and then marked off the location for two pocket hole screws per end. After marking off the 2x4 in thirds, the legs could be positioned equidistant from one another, clamped and attached with pocket hole screws. Next, I measured the center point of the front and back inside skirts to position the support, but I noticed it bowed past the measurement captured at the corner. 
so I set clamps on the front and rear rail skirt assemblies and attached the chain between them to tighten the clamp which allowed me to close the gap just enough to attach the center support with pocket hole screws after adjusting the levelers to be flush with the top edge of the skirt. To prevent a noisy bed I decided to run a 1 16th inch thick adhesive neoprene strip around the top edge of the skirts and support. The slat at the very back edge was too wide to close the final gap so it needed to be ripped down in length. I marked it off and clamped a one by parallel to the pencil line to use as a guide with a circular saw on top of the sacrificial board. After repeating the previous sanding process, I cleaned up and painted the slats as well. Now it was time to drill 1 16th inch pilot holes across the edges through the slats down into the center of the skirt's edges and center support before attaching everything with trim screws. I set the trim down between each post, leveled it, and clamped it before I drilled pilot holes for an inside quarter bracket screwed into the inside of each trim piece. For each bracket, I drilled an additional countersunk hole, then connected the bracket to the slat using a timber screw. With the trim clamped and level, I screwed small brackets across the underside of the trim and outside rail, then removed the clamps. To prevent chipping the painted bolt heads, I added painter's tape to the wrench and used a ratchet to tighten all the nuts that connected the brackets and beams. After I assembled everything, I was really happy with how clean the platform came out and how cool the little industrial metal cues looked, but there was still one more feature to build, the pipe accents and faux stage lighting. I started by measuring the width and height of the inside opening from post to post and from trim to beam. Then I measured a variety of different one inch pipe fittings and flanges while assembled and disassembled so that I could subtract them from the desired total dimension and get each pipe's length. The local hardware store did the cutting for free as long as I purchased the pipe there. I assembled the pipes and fittings and clamped them to check the fit. removed the covers from the directional wall lights that I bought and mocked those up with painter's tape to determine the best looking spacing and mark their location on the pipe's bottom edge. After drilling a pilot hole and then using a step drill bit to accept the light's lamp fitting, I washed and cleaned the pipes and painted them satin black. On the reverse side, I drilled a much larger hole to work on the electrical and attach the lamp nut. Next, three lengths of Romex were cut and fed from one large hole to the next, with the last length being long enough to run down to the electrical box inside the entire pipe assembly. Before securing the painted pipe to the bed frame, I attached each light to the pipe and used wire nuts to connect each length the Romex to each light in a series. Then mark the location of where the pipe fitting contact the inside of the post and drilled an angled hole up to the electrical box cavity and fed the Romex in, then connected the last piece of horizontal pipe. I slid the Romex through the electrical box and fastened it to the post, and then used the knurled guitar knob inspired dimmer switch that added to my music theme. For a power source, I cut the end off an extension cord and wired that to the Romex according to the switch's instruction manual, and then tested the circuit with an old light bulb. Then drilled pilot holes and used wood screws through the holes of the pipe flanges to secure the assembly. the wire nuts on top of the pipe, I cut and painted small lengths of square aluminum stock and then drilled holes to accept flexible wire tubing. I created and printed black and white artwork using old patents to hang behind the bed, added some accent decor, and adjusted some new light bulbs to add drama.
thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to catch more cool ideas, please subscribe.